Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. In this video, we're going to talk about how to access an endpoint with a JWT or a JavaScript web token. And the reason for this video came about from a TikTok video I posted five days ago. Exactly. I think it tells me so it's done quite well. It's got over 20,000 views, which is quite good in my opinion in, in five days. And I'm going to pause it because I can hear it. I don't I don't want to hear my voice right now. And the, their comments are mainly good, but one comment stood out to me, and that's this one over here. So this person said they're completely confused or 100% confused. And I understand there's a lot going on in this video. I had to put it down to one minute so it can be on YouTube Shorts as well. So I'm going to spend this video explaining more about this video here. So if you haven't seen this video, go ahead and watch this first. I'm going to put a link in the description, but let's go. Let's talk about the code. And before I go into the code, please, please, please subscribe to my channel and like this video so others can find it. And I just want to grow the community. I want to grow the development community. I want more people to get good at JavaScript. So please share this with your friends who are learning and people who want to know more about code. Cool. So let's jump into this. So this is the exact code used for that TikTok video. And there's a lot in there. So I'm going to comment out this bit down here and first explain the bit at the top. So this bit here, this is a function called get data. It's an async function and it's async because I'm using the fetch API. So I'm calling an API that I've got running locally. So here is the code for it at the moment. This is the, the terminal running this API. And what it's doing is calling a GraphQL API. Now, don't worry too much about this. If you do want to know about GraphQL, let me know in the comments below. But basically what I'm doing is getting data to do with information about um, information about a person's items they've put into a database. So I've got, got it from these two dates, and this is the data that I want from that database. But don't worry about that too much. So this is a post request, and I'm expecting JSON data to be returned back to me. And we've got this auth token. Now this is here because it's a restricted API. You have to be logged in to get data from this API, and that's the way I've written it. And this is common in, many APIs, if you log into Twitter or Facebook, they only allow you to see stuff after you've logged in. And if you're not logged in, they'll kick you back to the login page. And this is how they do that. So if I were to get rid of this, or let's actually comment it out. If I were to comment this out, and this is the, the query. So because I'm using GraphQL, I have to pass in the query for it to work. Usually you use a GraphQL client like Apollo. I'm not using that for the purpose of this video. And what I'm gonna do is just console log the response I get back. So let's open up the VS Code terminal, like so. And let me run this function. So I'm gonna run this in Node, like so. And if I hit that, this is what I get back. So it says no auth header provided. That's because I've commented it out. So I'm gonna uncomment it. And if I run this again, it will say the JWT is malformed. Now, what is the JWT? Well, that's here. So anything after the bearer is the JWT or JavaScript web token. And the bearer signifies that, that I am the person that bears the token and I'm going to give it to the API to say that I am a genuine person. I have actually logged in. Now, in this case, the auth token is malformed because there's nothing being passed into it. I'm not passing any data. So it's just it just as bearer with, with nothing here. So let's go ahead and get an actual auth token. And the way I've written the API is to get an auth token, you have to log in with the username and password. So let's uncomment this out. And that's basically what this login function is doing. So I don't need this anymore. And this login function is logging into the slash login part of the API. This isn't GraphQL. I think GraphQL auth is a bit more involved. Um, but if you want to know more about that, again, please let me know in the comments below. So here is a test username and a test password. Of course, this is test because I wouldn't be exposing it to you if it was a real password. And this is again a post. So I'm posting the username and password as a JSON string and I'm getting the data back. So the data that I get back will be the token and the refresh token, and I think that's it. I'm using AWS Cognito to, to get this authentication, to, to get the auth token and refresh token. If you want to know more about setting up AWS Cognito, again, let me know in the comments below, but let's go ahead and, and use that. So again, this is async because I'm using await, and because I'm running this in Node, so not in the browser, there's no support for top level await. If you don't know anything about top level await, don't worry. 
just throw that out of your mind. But async and wait, I've done a few videos on TikTok about that. If you want to know more about that on YouTube, let me know, I'm happy to do that. And so because it's a promise and I'm using async and wait, I have to use the then method to get the data from the promise. So what I'm gonna do now is comment this out. I'm just gonna run login regularly. So I'm just gonna hit that here. Whoops, this is annoying. So I'm just gonna run the login function without passing any arguments. So I don't think it takes any. So I'm just gonna run this function and I'm going to just console log the, the data. So I'm gonna comment that out just to show you what I got. There we go. So now let's run this code. Okay, so it's logging me in. And then I get the refresh token, as I said, and I also get the access token. So this is my JWT. So this is what I have to pass in to my get data in order to get access to this data. So let's uncomment this and get rid of that. And now let's uncomment this as well and get rid of the line 33. And there, so what it does is, is it runs this function and with the username and password, gets the data which you see here and then passes the access token part of that data into this get data function. So this is running get data, passing it into here, and then that will be part of the auth token. So the response we get back after we've logged in, so this will say, hey, this is a genuine user. So it will log me in and then do the proper query and get me the actual data. So let's do that now. Uh, this all looks good. I'm gonna run the code. So here we have no issues and we get the actual data back. So I hope this makes a bit more sense than the one minute TikTok video or YouTube short I put out there. Again, if you want me to elaborate on anything, please let me know. And thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.